Hello everyone, this is Ben back with you in the model shop. It's good to see everybody again. Uh, hope you've been having a great summer. I'm finally back from my major training event. That's all taken care of. So here's what we're going to cover today. I'm um, going to do most of the main painting and detail on the whole hull of the ship. I know in the last episode I got the base colors down, uh, but this time I'm going to show you some of the detailing that I did um, to help add a little bit more realism to the whole thing. Uh, then, so I'll do that. Then I'm going to show you some of the actual airbrushing and just quickly some people to ask about my airbrush setup and you'll see me do some actual painting. Uh, then we move on to the bow where we go ahead and start working with the Pontos detail set and get a lot of the brass down and in place. Um, we get the forward mount in for the uh, Four 20 millimeter anti-aircraft cannons that go up in the front, the foot lockers, foot lockers that um, the ammo would go in, and the bits, and some of the hatches, and most of the bow is there, and painted up so you can see what's going on there. Um, in the next video, we'll start working with uh, the anchor chains and uh, the final photo etch detail up in the front. There's just a couple of ladders that need to go in and then we'll start working on the wooden deck, sorting that situation out. So yeah, those are the three main things. Um, thanks for your patience, and uh, let's get in it so you can see what's going on. Thanks. All right, so before we get too far along here, I wanted to show you some of the work I've done on the lower hall in the red area below the bootstripe. Uh, we need to First of all, I, I'm going to weather this thing, so you're seeing some of the initial weathering effects. Then we needed to put some panel lines in where the plates were. This was very difficult to figure out because my reference book didn't have any good photos and I looked everywhere I could online and couldn't come up with anything. So, well, I came up with some things uh, from World Warships and from some of the reference photos. I decided to go ahead and put this plating uh, line down. And I wanted to show you this from here. It is, let's zoom in quite a bit here so you can see, mostly uh, zinc chromate and then some Russian uh, red. And as you can see, I just went ahead and masked off and used a brush and got it splotched on there. Now, we're zoomed in really, really close so that you can see this, and this is still early in the weathering stage. We back up the panel lines almost, almost disappear. Now this is the key here. You gotta have them be pretty pronounced at first so that you can go over it with an airbrush later to lighten everything up so it's not as prominent. Well, let me go ahead and spin the ship around so you can see the other side. It's got a little bit more weathering detail on it already. Alright, here's the port side. Uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. So here I've got a lot more weathering going on. Uh, the lines aren't as prominent yet. And when you're at this stage of the game, the paint is going to be glossy and flat and splotchy and just kind of all over the place. And that's okay because ultimately uh, when you're done, you're going to put a flat dull coat over this and that'll even out all of the tones but this will definitely help with uh, showing off kind of the wear and tear that we're trying to do. Um, some of you are losing your minds already because why would I do this? You know the ship all, never looked this bad in port blah 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 blah. Well first of all the ship's not in port it doesn't have to be in port all the time and I got this book down there it's about an inch thick and it's just full of pictures of the thing all roughed up so I, I just don't want, this is such a huge chunk of the hall that you're going to see. Sorry, visually, we need to do something here to, to liven this up and give it some interest. Now, as you can see already, backed up from here, and this is only about, you're looking at about two feet away, uh, it kind of just goes back to being pretty much a red hall. And then you can see some stuff right there, but as we zoom in, you get closer, you got all sorts of stuff to look at. So, this all needs to get softened up next uh, with an airbrush, but I wanted you to see everything before we got to that point. Alright, so let's get an airbrush out and do some work. 
All right, before we get going too far along here, someone was asking me about my airbrush setup. Um, let's see, this is an Iwata Eclipse HP CS double action airbrush that I use. Uh, this thing is amazing. They're not cheap. Uh, I want to say they're about 140 bucks somewhere in there, plus or minus. But I bought this at Hobby Lobby, and at Hobby Lobby, you can get a every day get a coupon 40% off any one item. So I got this out the door for like 80 bucks or something like that with tax. Totally worth it. My compressor, holy cow, nothing fancy. Uh, it's an all-in-one deal. This thing says Airbrush City on it. <laughs> I got that online. Uh, I run it about, let's see here, I think I run about five pounds. Oh, even less than that. Yeah, about five pounds, five PSI. Um, I know, why don't I have something better than that? I bought that thing about 12 years ago, and it came with a double action airbrush for $120 still working so yeah I mean I'll get a real air compressor one of these days but that thing keeps working so it's alright anyway um oh and then I got a you know just a regular spray booth to uh, air duct the uh, paint fumes outside kind of not big enough for this project works for all the other ones um someone once upon a time said get yourself a good quality airbrush and I was like why well, I had cheap ones who cares these are incredible. Uh, I, now, if you don't know how to use a double action airbrush, don't run out and spend $100 on one because you'll get really frustrated. Take the time to learn on an inexpensive one. Um, I went with this company because I like it, it works for me, and the parts for me are readily available in case I mess up the needle or lose something. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my airbrush setup. Let's get painting. Alright, so here we are on the port side of the ship. And as you can see from out here, it's all nice and red uh, with some modulation and whatnot. So let's zoom in here and take a look at some of the detail as you get up closer. So you can see you've got some nice hull modulation. Um, you can see kind of the panel lines or the armor lines and some of the weathering that's gone on. So, you know, I think this is worth your while there because when you back up from the ship, it just looks like any old scale. But you get up closer and you want to be able to pick out all the little details uh, that don't normally show up. Like there's some of the hull plating and everything. It's just nice. I think that this was worth the effort. Um, 
I have not seen a ship out of dry dock in color, well, in dry dock in color, um, you know, from World War II to see what kind of wear and tear would be on the hull, but I imagine something along these lines would be there. So, anyway, I, I think that this looks really nice and was totally worth the effort. And then, of course, you, know, you back up, get out here. And it looks good. Get the full ship on here. Let's go ahead real quick and take a look at the um, port side. Okay, here we are on the port side of the ship. We'll just start at the bow and work our way to the stern. Same type of deal. Um, it's just that the, uh, obviously the modulations are different and the details are different. So, give everyone the chance to take a look and see what we got going on here. I think this was totally worth the time to work out where the hull plating was going to be and figure out um, some of these little details just to help the whole thing kind of come alive a little bit. You get up real close like this, there's a lot of little things happening and it's all different at different points here as you move along. And I think it looks sharp. I think it was worth the effort. And if we just back up a little bit here, you start to lose some of that detail and it starts to go back to looking, I think, a little bit more organic. And you just get back out here to the full viewing distance and it all just about disappears and you just got a nice looking haul. All right, good enough, moving on. Okay, so moving along into the uh, photo etching, you can see that Pontos provides you with these just incredible glossy um, high definition pictures of what all the parts are supposed to look like. And they're super detailed, as I mentioned before. The problem with them is uh, some of these some of these instructions, depending on what you're looking at, um, well, I guess this one's not the best example. Well, sure, down here, like, you know, what exactly is happening right here? Like, you gotta zoom in with these teeny tiny little pieces, and maybe they're shown up above, but I need something, basically I need, I need a little bit of help here with this, and so there's a solution we're gonna show you here. Okay, so I have my, uh, this is my iPad here, and I've gone to pontosmodels.com. I'll post a link uh, in the description down below. But you can go to the instructions on every single one of their ships, uh, the kits, which is great. So you can go ahead and check out the instructions for everything. And those of you using the uh, Mark II instructions or the Mark I, Mark I detail sets, uh, please feel free to sound off down below. I haven't looked to see if anything like this is available online yet. But basically, go to the instructions and up here at the top, you have pages of each of the instructions. Now, this is just the main sheet. You could go ahead and scroll through the whole thing. But we're going to be using, I opened these tabs up, these two pages. So if you check this out in the instructions here, uh, I'm going to be working on the bow next. We need all this information, and it's kind of small. And it's small on the instruction sheet, too. But if you go online, you could click and drag in, and it stays nice and clear and tells you what everything is, which is great. And then we're going to work up on this area. And as you can see, I know there's some glare going on here with me and everything, but you can zoom way in and see all the detail up close from their photographs. And it resizes these numbers for you uh, so that you can see what pieces you're supposed to be using. Same with like down here, um, you know, I'm not hard of seeing yet, but I'm getting there. And as you zoom in, the number readjusts automatically so you can see the size and you can see in good detail uh, what's going on here. So anyway, that's what I'm going to be using 
uh, to figure out how to work on this bow section next year. Hope that helps. All right, so we're working on the uh, deck plating up here and we ran into our first kind of issue. Uh, you can see right here, we've got some cap stands and little details and everything going into place. But what I'm interested in is right back there. Uh, so we have like, basically, I'll show you the instructions, this horizontal cap stand that goes here and then we have another one that angles right here and it doesn't really fit right. Let me show you what I'm talking about in the instructions. All right, so here we are, we're working with this brass piece 24-3 and 906 to get right in here, this little deal. As you can see, the cap stand comes around and hits this other one that lays in at an angle. It's supposed to lay in all nice and neat like that. Um, that's not really what's happening though. So here in this other set of instructions it shows that you have your deck and then this cap stand lays in here at this angle. So the issue that I have is this brass piece 24-3 is wider than piece 906 when folded. So I ended up kind of breaking that part to get it to work. Uh, piece 88-1, that's the whole main deck plate. It lays at an angle, works out nicely. Problem is, so I can get this to lay in an angle and I can get the cap stand in here. It won't lay below the deck line at this angle and fit. So what I have to do is remove some of the deck right here in order to get these pieces to lay in uh, at that angle. So that's what we're working on right now. Okay, there it is all assembled together. Um, as you can see right here, I was able to get it laying down at the angle that matched the instructions. Uh, I had to cut out a lot of plastic in here to get this to go down and I, I should have took a picture of it or something. I didn't, I'm sorry, I got this piece laid in there and everything lined up right and I was like, holy crap, that's perfect, I need to just glue it into place, so I did. Um, and that's the end result. I did manage to get a f uh, naval reference of how this worked. Basically it looks like it, there's a locker, a chain locker right under this area and it comes out of this cap, across this uh, cap stand here or bearing basically. Roller goes across over to this cap stand around the back and then this way up to the front and then I imagine all sorts of you know, you could do all sorts of things with it up there. So anyway, there it is installed and it works. So let's move on. All right, so here is the forward bow section with almost all the photo etch and everything. Well, actually, yeah, that this is all the photo etch for this part is all done. I'm showing it to you now because the next thing I'm gonna do is paint all this weather deck blue or weather blue, navy blue, deck blue, something along those lines here. And uh, the bits will be painted the same color blue. Uh, these parts, this actually has a, it's cool, on the front they have a little, um, uh, kind of like a pulley, I don't know the naval term, uh, that goes through here, a guide uh, for your lines that you go to shore, which is really nice. They're gonna be painted the light gray that goes on the side. Uh, all of this, you need to see it now, and this is going to get painted now. Because what happens is, I'm sure you're all familiar with this part, the look of the Missouri, all the Iowa battleship class hulls. Um, this is where the 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns go. There's two up here on the forward bow, and then you know it's going to be difficult to paint underneath here. So we want to go ahead and paint all this first, put this whole assembly together, attach it with it painted, and work out all those little details. Um, the only last thing I wanted to talk about was up here on the bow, uh, somebody, I, I think it looks cool, someone's going to lose their mind. If you could see right here, you've got these covers uh, over the forward part of the, um, where the anchor goes down. Notice they're just slightly curved. I, they were curved on the uh, Arizona, so I thought, oh, they're supposed to be curved up here, so I put a little bevel on them, I thought it looked cool. Technically, it's not correct. I found a reference photo. They do just lay on their flat across. They're actually a steel grate. They're not a net, uh, and they would go straight across. So for the hardcore purists out there, uh, sorry I did it wrong. You can do it right. But then as you see here, 
I mean, you're you're barely gonna see them when it's done. So, anyway, that is my story about all of that. Let's go ahead and paint this part up. Okay, real quick before uh, I paint this, um, if you can see here, there's a white edge of styrene that I added to the perimeter of the anti-aircraft gun position. I, I looked at some reference photos and this was a pretty prominent, I'll see if I can scroll down here, uh, lip. Let me pan up here. There we go. See how it kind of sticks out? My iPad actually is helping you show that. That, the kit provided part just didn't didn't do it for some reason. It was there, but it, it, it wasn't very prominent. So I've added that, uh, now we're gonna paint. Uh, but I just wanted everybody to see the little detail that is kind of missing from the, the kit part here. So, all right, pressing on. Well, there we are. That's what we're gonna do for now. Uh, the 20 millimeter mount is in place. You can see some of the uh, photo etches in there. Uh, the two ammo boxes for the cannons are there, uh, and everything else is painted up for now. This is this is basically the bulk of what I can do. Uh, let's move over, take another look over here. All right, from here, uh, you know, port side, you can see we've got our bits that are all done, and this, um, man, I don't know what these are called. But someone will comment down in the link, and I appreciate it. You'll tell me what these are called. But this forward one, both of those have little pulleys that go through them, which is nice to help guide um, your lines that go out. Uh, up here in the bow, this photo etch, like I said, I got the railing done. I got the railing done. Uh, but there's two steps, ladders, that go up here and here on either side that get you up there. Um, and so I have to add those and the big remaining item is the anchor chain and anchors themselves need to go in here and I've got that so here is the kit provided brass chain and then I also bought uh, some black chain at the railroad shop today because you've got these little anchor points that are supposed to connect uh, to the other main anchor chain. So we're going to be working on that next time. That'll be all wrapped up. Um, I'm going to save the 20 millimeter cannons till I do the rest of them. And of course, we've got our mast up in the front. I don't want to knock that off. Um, we're going to have to start working on the fittings here, paint the deck, get it primed, and get our wood deck in place. Uh, also, we're going to have to start working on that. So That'll be for next time. So anyway, that's all I've got for this week. Thanks for being patient while I was away most of the summer. Here's one last look at all of this. I think the bow is starting to look, well, I think it's starting to look really sharp. Um, this is having that 20 millimeter mount up there starting to add a lot of character to uh, what we've got going on here. So, yeah, that's it. Hopefully I'll have another video for you all next week. Thank you very much for watching.